Hi guys, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 3 in Azure Data Factory Real Time Scenarios Playlist. In this video, we are going to learn how to copy all the files from one ADLS folder to another in Azure Data Factory. So let's see what our requirement is. So as we discussed, we want to copy all the files present in a folder to another folder inside Azure Data Lake Storage using ADF pipelines. Okay. So suppose this is our storage account where we have one uh, folder. Suppose this is the input folder. Okay. So in this input folder, we have fi four files and we want to copy all the files at once from this input folder to another folder, suppose output folder. Okay. So earlier in our previous videos, uh, in the second part of this playlist, we have copied uh, this these files one by one. So suppose I have selected this file name and we have loaded this uh, file in the output folder. Then in the next run, I have loaded this file. So this particular scenario we have covered in the, our last video. So please go through that video as well. And in this video, we want to load all the files at once from input folder to output folder. So let's see how to do that using ADF pipelines. Okay. So let me go to Azure portal. So here I have my storage account where we uh, we have few folders. Okay, so inside this ADLS input folder, I have four files. Okay, you can see these are CSV files which have some records. Okay, so now we want to load these files from ADLS input folder to ADLS output folder, which is not currently present. So we will create that folder during the runtime and we want to load all these four files into that folder. Okay. So let me go to ADF pipeline and start creating the pipeline. So first thing that we need to know is what are the file names that we want to copy. So basically we want to uh, go inside this folder and, and we want to fetch all the file names. Okay. So how to do that? So let me go back and here there is something called get metadata activity which helps in retrieving the metadata of any file or folder. Okay. So we, if we want to get any data of the file or folder, then, then we can use this, then we can use this get metadata activity. So let me drag this and in the settings, we need to uh, create a data set pointing to the folder because on the folder level, we want to get the file names inside this folder. So let me start creating the data set pointing to my ADLS Gen, Gen 2 account. And here our file is in CSV format. As we are pointing to the folder, so it doesn't matter if uh, which format you are choosing here. So let me just select CSV for now. And let me select the linked service pointing to my ADLS account. And here in the file path, I'll just point my uh, data set to the folder level. I'm not selecting any file. So let me choose that and let me hit on OK. So once I uh, created the data set, you can see this fill list is coming where we need to choose which kind of metadata you want to retrieve. So here there are options like child items, exist, item name, item type or last modified. So these details we can get out of um, the folder. Okay. So in the folder level, what are the child items means what are the files present in the folder? So it will give us all the uh, name of the files present in that folder. Then if exist or not, if that folder exists or not, based on that, it will give us the output in a Boolean result. That means if the folder exists, it will give true. If it doesn't exist, it will give false. Okay. And this item name will retrieve the folder name. Then item type means if the type if the item is folder or file, uh, it will give the uh, type of the item. And then last modified when that particular resource or folder was last modified. Okay, so if I okay, so if I would have selected a file instead of only folder, let me browse and select a file in this input folder. Let me select this file. Okay, so once I go back. Uh, now this data set is pointing to file. So if I select uh, this argument option or this field list, this you can see the drop down has changed. Uh, there are few other options that are coming because on the file level we can get what are the column counts, what or what is the hashing value for that file. Uh, using this we can get that data and other things uh, like last modified uh, date of that file. So similarly other things we can. Um, get the details and we will talk about it in later videos. So uh, let me go back into this data set and let me remove this uh, file name. 
because we want to uh, point our data set only to the folder level to retrieve uh, the file names. So, let me select this child items which will give us the list of all the file names okay, present in that folder. So, let me hit on debug and show you uh, the file names present in that folder. So, let it get completed. Yeah, so the get metadata activity has completed one execution and if I see the output you can see and in this child item array we we are getting all the uh, name of the files okay and the type is file so you can see there are four files which is equivalent to what we have in the ADLS folder okay so now we want to iterate through each of the files and we want to copy those files inside our ADLS output folder so to iterate uh, on top of that folder we can use something called for each activity so let me connect this uh, get metadata activity and for each activity and inside this for, uh, for each activity setting we can mark this sequential option if we want to copy each of the files one by one or if you want to have parallel execution we can uh, give a batch count of 10 files at one time or uh, suppose two files at one batch we can give this kind of information uh, for now if we don't give any batch count by default it will select 20 files for parallel execution okay and at max we can give 50 for this batch count that is 50 files can be copied at once in parallel execution okay so in our case we have only four uh, files so I am not giving any batch count it will take all the four files at once and it will start parallel execution for all the four files and here in this items we need to specify the expression uh, that will point to the output of get metadata activity so let me uh, add dynamic content and here we can select output of this get metadata activity so in our case we have selected child items so let me uh, click on that now let me hit on ok now it will point to this child item array and this child item array contains file names inside that folder so it will it start iterating through each of these file names and start copying these files one by one so in for copying the files let me go inside this for each and let me uh, provide copy data activity okay so in this copy data activity we have to specify what is the source and what is the sync so here the source data set should be pointing to each of these files one by one it should be dynamic okay so here let me start creating the source data set which is pointing to ADLS and here let me select CSV format and let me select the linked service now let me select the folder itself and in this file name we are going to parameterize it so don't worry about it and let me remove this import schema option ok so uh, our data set is ready pointing to the folder now ok now let me open this data set again and here in this file name we need to give the file names one by one so to do that let me create a parameter called file name ok so our parameter is ready now let me go back to connection and here in the file name option let me select this parameter ok so now what will happen is our data set is parameterized we can give value to this file name inside our pipeline so let me go back and now you can see this file name parameter is showing up in the pipeline itself that is in the source tab of this copy activity so we, we need to provide what is the file name here so as we are inside this for each which is iterating through the output of get metadata activity right uh, so let me go back and here let me uh, again open this output and you can see uh, we are treating this child item as the items inside for each so what we can give in the uh, file name is we can give item dot name ok so for each instance it will select each of these names for the execution so for the first instance it will have item dot name as uh, england dot batsman dot csv similarly for second uh, copy data uh, execution it will have this one as the value so similarly for parallel execution will start ok so let me go back and here let me add dynamic content and let me go down and here you can see there is something called for each current item so if I select this you can see it is giving at the rate item as the value and here let me give dot name because inside the name property of this 
item you can see inside this name property we are getting the file names ok. So, our uh, data set uh, source data set is parameterized. Now, let me go to sync tab and here let me create a new data set pointing to output folder that will be created during the runtime. Let me select CSV format and let me select the same linked service and we do not have any ADLS output folder. Let me give the name hard coded name that will create the folder for us ok and we will parameterize the file name again here. Let me leave it for now and let me remove this and let me hit ok. So, in the sync let me open the uh, data set again and again we need to parameterize this one because we need to have these files with the proper name. We need to uh, copy this file with the name same as what we have in the source. So, in the sync this file should have the same name that is england.batsman.csv. So, for that let me create parameter in sync data set as well. So, I am giving file name as the parameter name and here in the connection tab let me select this uh, parameter ok. Now, let me go back to the pipeline and here you will have the option to pass the value for this parameter. So, similar to the previous one I will pass item dot name ok because we want to have the same name in the ADLS output folder. So, uh, we are good now let me go back let me minimize this and let me debug it now ok. So, you can see four parallel copy data activity has been started. So, the pipeline execution is completed for all the four files. Now, let me go back to my storage account and let me go back here in the containers and let me hit on refresh. So, you can see ADLS output folder has been newly generated and if I click on this we can see all the four files are present here which are uh, just now it got created ok and it, uh, let me see the data as well. So, our data is intact which is similar to what we have in the input folder. Let me open input folder england.batsman. So, you can see data is exactly same. So, uh, we are able to achieve this. We have copied the data from all the files in the folder to another folder using ADF pipeline ok. So, that is it for this video guys. Please hit on like button and please subscribe to the channel if you have not done it yet. Thank you. Please stay tuned.